Hi everyone and welcome to my virtual GSG session. I'm currently teaching students about uh, nature in the woods without any service um, for the program called Adler School. So that's why I'm recording a session on geometric sequences and also one on, on annuities and I'm gonna post those to YouTube and send out links for those that you still get some guide study group session time even though I'm not here. So today we're gonna be talking about geometric sequences and we have like six practice problems to go through and then we'll be good to go. So, there's three different equations that we wanna use for geometric sequences. Um, and overall, a geometric sequence is just when you take a sequence of numbers, so starting, say you start with a number two, and you multiply it by the same thing over and over and over to get the rest of the numbers. So two, if you multiply it by two, you get four. Multiply by two again, you get eight. Then you get 16, et cetera, et cetera. 32, 64. So here, um, r is going to be called the common ratio. So the common ratio r is what you multiply the first number by to get to the second number. So you multiply 2 times 2 to get 4, 4 times 2 to get 8, 8 times 2 to get 16, and you keep going. Uh, but sequences can also be decreasing. So say you started with 27, and then it went down to 9. What do you have to multiply 27 by to get to 9? Well, in this case, it would be one third. One third of 20, or R, R would be one third. So like 27 times one third would get you nine. Nine times one third would get you three. Three times one third gets you one. One times one third will get you one third. And then it keeps going. One ninth, one twenty seventh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so those are the two different types of geometric sequences. They can either be increasing or decreasing where here r is greater than 1 and here r is less than 1. So, going back to the equations, the first equation we have is the nth term equation, which is a sub n equals a sub 1, which is just the first term in the sequence, raised to r, times r to the n minus 1 power. The second equation is for a finite sum, so say they ask you to find like the sum of the first 28 terms of a sequence, you would use this equation. a sub 1, which is the first term, times 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. And the third equation, um, this s sub n means the sum of n terms. And this s sub infinity means like the sum of infinitely many terms. This is the infinite sum equation, where a sub 1, which is the first term, times 1 divided by 1 minus r is your equation for that. So we're going to be using these three equations uh, throughout the session today. And then... Awesome. I just wanted to check that my computer or my phone was still recording because earlier it was messing up. But anyway, we'll go ahead and start with the first example problem. So the first example tells you that the first term in the sequence, a sub 1, is 1.05. And it tells you that a sub 2, the second term, is 1.4. It asks you to find a sub 25. So this problem is asking for the 25th term. That's our question mark. So we know we want to use this equation up here. So you're going to want a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. That's our equation. But we don't have r yet. So we need to figure out what r is before we can use that equation. So if you have a sub 1 and you multiply it by r, that gives you a sub 2. That's kind of what I was talking about right here with the sequences earlier. 2 times 2 was 4. So a sub 1 times r got you a sub 2. So if you want to find r by itself, you just divide each side by a sub 1. So r is equal to a sub 2 over a sub 1. That's the general equation for finding r. Um, it could also be like r equals a sub 3 over a sub 2. It just has to be the next term divided by the previous term. So if we're trying to find r, it's going to be a sub 2, which is 1.4, divided by a sub 1, which is 1.05. So you get r is 1 and a third, or 1.33. It's our r value. So now once we have our r value, you can just plug into this equation. So a sub 25 is, a sub, is equal to a sub 1, which is 1.05, times r, which is 1.33, to the n minus 1 power. So n is 25, so 25 minus 1 is 24. 
And you should get that the 25th term, a sub 25, is equal to 1046.45. So that's kind of like the simplest, one of the simpler um, problems we could have. Moving on to the next one, this one's a little trickier. This one tells us to try and find the sum over 23 terms. So S sub 23 is what we're trying to find. And it tells you that the first term is one, or it tells you that the third term, rather, so A sub 3 is 5.25. And it tells you that A sub 8, the eighth term, is 15.52. And that's all the information you're given. So we have the third term, and we have the eighth term. We're trying to use this equation right here, um, which means we need the first term and we need R, and we don't have either of those two things yet. So to find, first we're going to try to find R. And it's a little bit different than what we did here. It's a little more complicated. But if you have the third term, so if you had a sub 3, and you multiply it by R, that's going to give you the fourth term. So then if you take all of that, multiply it by R again, that gives you the fifth term. Multiply it by R again, you have the 6th term, by R, you have the 7th term, and one more time, that would give you the 8th term. So what I'm doing here is taking A sub 3, multiplying it by R, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times, and that gives us the 8th term. So now we can kind of plug in what we know, A sub 3 and A sub 8. So you know that 5.25 times R 5 times, so I'm just going to write that as times r to the fifth power is equal to a sub 8, which is 15.25, or 15.52. So once you get that, you can divide each side by 5.25. And you'll have r to the fifth equals 15.52 over 5.25. You can plug that into your calculator if you want, just don't round. And then we have this r to the fifth power, and we want to make sure r is by itself. So you take the fifth root of each side. So r is going to be equal to the fifth root of 15.52 divided by 5.25, which when you plug that in your calculator, you get 1.24207. So that's our r value for r. So we're getting closer. We have our r value, but we still don't have our um, a sub 1. We know that this equation here needs, we need to use a sub 1, so now we need to find that. And the way to find that is to use this nth term equation. So the next step is, we're going to use this equation that we used in the previous problem. And we're just going to use it with a sub 3 here. So a sub 3 is equal to a sub 1, which we're trying to find, and now we're solving for a sub 1, times r, which we just found is 1.24207 to the n minus 1 power, and since n is 3, that's 3 minus 1, which is 2. So you divide each side by 1.24207 squared. Not my mistake. We already know what a sub 3 is. So a sub 3 is 5.25. We can fill that in. And you get in your calculator that a sub 1 should be 3.40303. Now we have a sub 1, now we have r, now we can finally use our s sub n equation that we want to use. So plugging into that equation, the finite sum equation, we're looking for s sub 23, the sum of those first 23 terms. So that's going to be equal to a sub 1, which is 3.40303 that we just found times 1 minus our r down there, 1.24207 to the 23rd power, because that's n, divided by 1 minus 1.24207. And make sure that only the r value is squared here. It's not 1 minus r quantity squared, it's just r being squared. So in your calculator, once you do that, you should get 2043.18. Is your sum over the first 23 terms. All right, let me just make sure it's still recording because I'm paranoid now. I wasted like probably 30 minutes recording and then I checked and it wasn't recording.
and I realized I didn't have storage on my phone because I had downloaded a bunch of Netflix episodes and that takes up a lot of space, so I deleted those. But anyway, um, this problem two that we just did is pretty intensive. Uh, I gave you, gave you the third and the eighth term, you had to use that to find R, then you had to use your nth term equation to find a sub one, and then once you do all that, then you can plug into the finite sum equation. So, kind of lengthy, hopefully it makes sense. Feel free to like pause the video or whatever, obviously, and go back and like make sure you actually understand what was going on. Um, but I'm just gonna keep on moving because you guys can pause this whenever you want. So the next question that we're gonna do, it says find the sum of all of the terms of a geometric sequence. So right there it says all of the terms, that kind of clues you in to use the infinite sum equation. Um, and it gives you the 10th term, and it gives you a common ratio. So, Problem three is asking for S sub infinity. It's asking for the um, infinite sum of all of these terms. And it gives you that A sub 10 is 7.95. And it gives you that R is 0.51. So the two things we know for this problem is that a sub 10 is 7.95 and r is 0.51. So they give us the 10th term and they give us the common ratio and they ask us to find the infinite sum of all of these terms in the sequence. So you kept adding them up forever and ever and ever. And real quick, Alexi talked about this in class briefly, but if you have a uh, sequence like 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, etc where the common difference r was uh, 2, common ratio, sorry, common ratio, r is 2, this, the sum over all the terms is just going to be infinity. If you keep adding more and more numbers that keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, you can't like, um, that doesn't converge to a specific number, it just keeps growing and growing and growing forever. But, in the example where I had 27, 9, 3, 1, 1 third, 1 ninth, etc., where the common ratio was 1 over 3. Here the common ratio is less than 1, and the numbers keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So eventually, if you just keep adding them up, you're going to get like really tiny numbers like 0. 000000000, 000 uh, like 2 or something. Um, probably not 2, but a number like that, and it'll eventually approach like a, one single number. So here you would get that the sum over all of the infinite numbers in this sequence is going to equal some actual number. So, if the r is less than 1, you're going to get that um, it approaches the sum, infinite sum approaches a specific number. If r is greater than 1, then it will not approach a specific number. Just to keep in mind. So, if Alexi ever asks a question where he says, find the sum of all the terms in a sequence where r is like 15 or something, anything greater than 1, you know that you don't have to do any work, it's just going to be infinity. You can't find the sum. But this one we can find the sum. Um, and the equation we want to use here is s sub infinity equals a sub 1 times 1 over 1 minus r. So here they give us r, but we still need to find a sub 1 before we can actually use that equation. So here's where we're going to use that method we did over there by multiplying by r a bunch. If you start with a sub 1, which we don't know, but we're trying to find, you multiply it by r, that gives you a, by a sub 2. Do it again, that's a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5, a sub 6, a sub 7, a sub 8, a sub 9, a sub 10, equals a sub 10. And that's what we have here. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, a sub, 9 r's that you're multiplying by. Um, so you can write that equation as a sub 1 times r to the 9th equals a sub 10. So in general, if you see a pattern over these two that we've done, a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 is going to equal a sub n. So I'll write that over here. If you want to add that to your notes. That's kind of the strategy that we're using here. 
Um, or you can just keep counting on the R's like I'm, I did there. So if we're looking for A sub 1, you just plug it in. You have R is 0.51, so you plug that in, raise that to the ninth power, equals A sub 10, which is 7.95. So divide each side by 0.51 to the ninth power, and you get A sub 1 is equal to 3405, 3405.93. So that's our a sub 1 term. And now we're almost done, because remember the problem is asking us for the sum of all of the terms in this sequence, and there are an infinite number of terms in a sequence, in any sequence. Um, so now we can plug into our equation, s sub infinity, which is right here, is equal to a sub 1, so 3405.93 times 1 over 1 minus 0.51. So this equation is a little bit simpler than um, the finite sum equation. So you get the sum over all of the infinite number of terms when you plug that in your calculator should be 6,950. 0.87. If you add up all the terms in that sequence, you get 6950.87. All right, so again, if you need to, go ahead and pause that there. I'm just going to check to make sure I'm still recording. Awesome. So we have three more to go through. The fourth problem asks us to find the nine-year economic impact of a $1.9 million investment if 14% of the money from one year gets recycled back into the community the following year. All right, so now we're dealing with economic impact, which is a very, it's just a real-life application of these um, sum, different sum problems that we've been doing. 